Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is February 19th, 2024, and Hansi Flick has reportedly rejected Bayern Munich and chosen Barcelona. Also, it's been revealed that Deco did meet with Alfonso Davis's agents in Barcelona. And finally, Joshua Kimmich is one step closer to Barcelona with reports saying that he is looking to leave the Bundesliga club. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mo and this is Barca News' live podcast on every Mondays and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where not only do we discuss the news, but where I also get to interact with you amazing people in the chat section, answering any questions and getting a discussion going. That's not to be confused with the post-match live analysis where we discuss the Barcelona match matches live and where I also get to interact with you wonderful people. And I haven't said that, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment. All of this helps this channel grow so I can continue bringing you the most up-to-date Barcelona news. But let's dive right into the news because there is a lot of crazy news today. And I hope I get through all of it. But lots of crazy news from Camp Barca. I uploaded a video earlier today, so make sure to check it out. But let's start with the crazy news that Napoli have decided to sack their manager, Walter Mazzarri, how do you like my pronunciation? Yesterday with Kvara, today with Mazzarri. I feel really, really proud of myself, but Napoli have sacked Mazzarri only two days before Barcelona are set to play against Napoli in the round of 16 of Champions League. This is huge news because Napoli are going through a lot of turmoil and sacking their manager two days before the Champions League cannot be the brightest idea, but that's, of course, great news for us because that maybe gives us a chop at qualifying to the quarterfinals. We'll see if Xabi and the team can take advantage of it. But the news is that Napoli have sacked Walter Mazzarri. He, they had already sacked their manager, Rudy Garcia, halfway through the season. They hired Mazzarri. He was only there for 17 matches. He was only able to win three out of the 17 matches. So now they've sacked him too and brought in their third coach this season. Absolutely nuts, total chaos, but they've brought Francesco Calzona, and he is, oddly enough, the coach of Slovakia, and he's still going to be the coach of Slovakia. In fact, he's going to coach Slovakia in the Euros, so he's going to do half the season with Napoli, then join Slovakia, do the Euros, total mess in Italy, but that's the news, and that, of course, favors us because Napoli are going through a very tough time. They're currently sitting ninth in the Serie A, there are 27 points behind first place, and they've already been knocked out of the Coppa Italia. So hopefully all this turmoil will help us win the, the champions, uh, the round of 16 of the Champions League. Now, speaking of that match, it has been reported that it's most likely that Laminia Mal will start ahead of Rafinha. Now, this is a little bit concerning because Laminia Mal has been playing 90 minutes of every match for a long time. So it's very worrying, but it also signals us that it looks like Rafinha has completely lost his starting spot on the team. Of course, I'm not surprised. I said that was going to happen at the beginning of this uh, of the season. Not surprised at all, but it's definitely something that Rafinha should definitely take into consideration because if a 16-year-old can take your spot, that means something you're doing wrong. Now, more news because it's reported that Xavi Hernandez might end up choosing a line of four midfielders, so a 4-4-2 with probably Lamin and Lewandowski in the front. And they're talking about probably having Inio Martinez start ahead of Pau Cuarci. Now, I understand the angle of this. Of course, Inio Martinez is a lot more, it's, it's, he's more of a veteran, a lot more experience on the big stage. So I understand why Xavi would want to opt for Inio Martinez. But I really think if even if he opt for Pau Cuarci, I wouldn't be too worried because Pau Cuarci has shown us that he has what it takes to be the team's starting center back. But nonetheless, this is what the reports are saying, that Inigo will most likely start ahead of Cuarci. And more news because it's reported that Joao Felix will travel with the team to Italy. Now, this is big because 
It had initially been completely ruled out. They said Joao Felix was not going to make it to Napoli. He was not going to be healthy on time. It looks like he is. And he will travel with the team to Napoli. Of course, he's cutting it kind of close. So I cannot imagine that Joao Felix is going to start. Maybe he won't even play at all. And if he does play, it might be a few minutes. But just know that Joao Felix will travel with the team to Napoli. Ferran Torres is not ready yet. And Sergio Roberto, it was thought that he would be ready, but he did not train with the team today. So it means that Sergio Roberto most likely ruled out as well. But Joao Felix back with the squad for that Napoli clash. Now, interesting statistic. And this is very scary. Barcelona has not won an away an around 16 away match in eight years. That's really crazy. The last time Barcelona won an away match in around the 16 was in 2016 when Luis Enrique was the coach and when we beat Arsenal in London 2-0, both goals of Lionel Messi, the second one coming from the penalty spot. And since that match, since that victory over Arsenal, we haven't won a single away match in eight years. We lost against PSG. Of course, then we had that heroic comeback against them. We drew against Chelsea. We drew against Lyon. And then the last one was against Napoli, where we drew one-to-one -one back in 2020. Of course, we did end up beating Napoli at home. But we haven't won an away match in the round of 16 in eight years. Hopefully this Wednesday we'll change that and hopefully we can get our first victory in an away match in around a 16 in eight years. Anyways, let's start with the chat section and then we will talk about the big news of today, which only dropped a few hours ago, by the way, which is that Hansi Flick has rejected Bayern München. Bayern München, another mess, another mess. But you know what? That's what they get. They made fun of us a lot. So screw them. I'm glad they're going through all of this. Mark says, if we can get Davis to be our left winger and back up left, I'm all for it. I will talk about Davis, so I'm not going to say anything more. Marek says, Mo, why are we needing Kvara? Kvara no, wait. Hivicha Kvaraskelia. Yeah, there you go. I'm so happy I learned that name. Uh, Mo, why are we meeting Kvara and Davis? Are we rich again? When does the financial troubles end? Financial trouble will end around 2025, 2026, and the stadium will be ready. Um, stadium will open in November, but only at 66% capacity. It will be fully ready in 2026. Um, wait. So, hello, Mo. A very good morning from North Korea. Is that real? I guess that's awesome if you are all the way there and... Huh. Okay. Anyways, Mikabarsa says it looks like Flake wants his 2020 Bayern squad. He destroyed us with. <laughs> now he built us with it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'll take it. If we can be the ones who defeat Bayern Munich 8 2, I'm all for it. Uh, let's see. What else? Spooky says Balde is mid and we have no left winger. Absolutely not. Balde is the most promising left back in Europe. It's not for gay. He's only 19 years old. The fact that people are already ruling out Balde, who's 19. 19. Fucking crazy to me. Um, remember, players only reach their prime until 25, 26. And Bali is 19. He has another ceiling of a ceiling of another six, seven years of growth and getting better. So let's stop with the nonsense. Bali is one of the most promising left backs in Europe. Just because he's having a bad season doesn't mean he's a bad left back. Let's not forget what he did last season at 18. Like people have such short memory, it's absolutely mind-boggling. But let's talk about the big news today, and that is that Hansi Flick has reportedly rejected Bayern München in favor of FC Barcelona. Now, there was talks that Bayern München were considering sacking Tuchel. Bayern Munich are not doing good in the Bundesliga. They look like they're set to lose it for the first time in a million years. They've also been knocked out of the uh, German Cup. So things are not going well for them. And as such, they were considering sacking Tuchel and bringing in Flick. Seems that Flick listened to Bayern Munich's offer, you know, out of courtesy. Let me see what you guys say. And it seems that he has rejected it because Flick is not in favor of being kind of like a solution, a temporary solution type thing coming halfway through the season or even next season. He's more excited about starting a project fresh. Now, as I reported before, Deco had talked to Hansi Flick's entourage, had let them know that Barcelona are seriously considering 
Hansi as a candidate to replace Xabi. They have given him and his entourage all the details of the club. You know, we're looking for a coach to develop this young talent. We don't have a lot of money for this for your salary. We also don't have a lot of money for signings. This is the situation. If you like it, you're welcome. If not, let us know. It seems that that conversation really excited and motivated Hansi Flick because he's very excited about the prospects of taking such a young and promising project, which is the Barcelona team, and turn it into a winning one. Seems that Hans is very excited about being able to mold and shape all the young talent that we have. You know, La Mina Mal, Hector Fort, Pau Cuarci, Mardiu, Gavi, Pedri, Araujo, Valde, etc. He's very excited about molding all these youngsters. And as such, it's reported that Hansi Flick is in favor of coming to Barcelona. Now, it's reported that Flick will, re will communicate to the club his interest in joining in the next few upcoming weeks. And then if Barcelona makes him a good offer, he will accept it. Again, Hansi Flick will communicate to Barcelona his interest in being the manager. And if Barcelona make him an offer, he will accept it, or a good offer, he will accept it. Now, of course, there's a lot of interest in, in Premier League. So we are not the only club after him. There are a lot of interest in Premier League. So Barcelona are going to have to move fast. But also Barcelona are going to have to make a good offer. We'll see what a good offer means to Flick. Of course, if it's out of the range of Barcelona, then maybe it won't happen. We're going to have to wait and see what that means once parties sit down and start negotiating. But that's the news for now. Hansi Flick rejecting Bayern Munich. He's looking to leave Germany. He's more excited about starting a project fresh and the prospects of molding and growing the Barcelona project excites him a lot more than anything else. And he's very fa in favor of coming to Barcelona and he will communicate that to the club. And if the club makes him a good offer, then he most likely will accept. By the way, this is why when everybody on the news were saying, oh, this Zerbi is going to be the next one. I said, hold on, hold on. We are not there yet. I don't know where people got that news from. Everybody was, I saw it all over Twitter. People, oh, that's it. The Zerbi is the chosen one. And I was like, mm, no, he's not. I'm not saying he won't become the next manager, but a decision has not been made. I don't know where people got that from, that the Zerbi has been chosen and he signed and he had landed in Barcelona and he bought a house and he was already trading the players. Like, I don't know where people got that from. It's not over. The race is not over. The two favorites are Flick and the Zerbi. And today's news does put Flick a little closer to Barcelona than the Zerbi. A little, I wouldn't say a little closer, closer because he is already Laporta's favorite. So we'll see what happens. But crucial days, next few days and next few weeks. Anyways, let's get back to the chat section. And then we will talk about Deco's meeting with Alfonso Davis. Man. Lately, the news in Barcelona has been insane. Uh, <laughs> Igor says, <laughs> can you speak English with an Italian accent? Um, I'm not that good with the Italian accent, um, so I don't want to embarrass myself. I think I'm a little bit better with the Russian accent. But anyways, FC Barcelona fan channel says, sometimes changing managers gives the team a sudden boost, which might change this uh, momentum in their favor. Uh, with... Uh, we have to be a bit cautious and not underestimate that. But I agree. Sometimes that does happen. It happened with Bayern Munich. They were kind of not doing well. The flick takes over, and all of a sudden, they win a freaking six double, right? But usually, it's the other way around. Usually, they, you change managers, and things get worse. This is more of a coin toss. So you're right. We shouldn't underestimate them, but it is good that they're going through turmoil because that kind of gives us, you know, a little bit of hope. If Napoli were not going through everything they're going, I would already said, oh, we're 99% chance we're going to lose it. But given all their turmoil they're going through, gives me a little more hope. Um, which is something I said in um, pre-match, post-match analysis. Someone said, we have zero hope against Napoli. And I said, hold on. We do have hope. They're not doing that hot. Um, so it's not that I have hope because oof, Barcelona are played amazing and they're just going to demolish Napoli. No, no, no. They have, we have hope because Napoli is also doing just as bad as us. So hopefully they're doing worse and that's it. Oh, and by the way, this reminds me. Um, when I, I made a short, say, or I said in the live stream and then made it into a short 
And I said, it's not a good idea to sack Shabby because things are going to get worse. And someone was like, what are you talking about? Napoli sacked their coach and they're doing so much better. Uh, the coach that just sacked was only there for 17 matches and he only won three out of 17. How is that better? I have no idea. I'm telling you guys, sometimes I come across the craziest freaking comments. But um, let's see. What else? What else? King City FC says, it feels so good to see Bayern Munchen struggle. Yes. I don't like to revel in people's misery. But honestly, they talked so much crap. And they made so much fun of us that, yeah. Um, anyways. Let's see. Uh, Benji says, Balde needs a coach like Flick. Most of our young players will grow under Flick. Yes, I think so. Uh, I think the same as the Zerbi. I think the Zerbi would also benefit a lot, our, our players. I don't have a favorite favorite. I think both are solid options. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll talk about that now real quick since we're talking about coaches. I've been seeing a comment a lot talking about who shouldn't go with the Zerbi because he uh, he will be the next Kika Setien. And everybody's saying that. And when, when you see a comment being repeated over and over again, it means someone somewhere said it on social media. And that's why everybody's repeating it because that's what I've learned in my two years on YouTube that when someone says something, whether on Twitter, YouTube, et cetera, everybody just goes and regurgitates it and just parrots the same comment. So I don't know who said that, but someone must have said it. So that's why everybody's saying it. And here's the thing. There's no way for us to know for sure. There's no way for us to know for sure that the Zerbi will be the next Kika Setien. Because on one hand, we have Pep Guardiola, who had only coached a third division team, Barca B. And everybody said he was inexperienced and that he was going to fail. And he ended up becoming the greatest coach in our history and one of the greatest coaches in the history of football. On the other hand, we have Xavi Hernandez, who also had no experience, who everybody wanted. Nobody batted an eye at the fact that he had only coached in Qatar. And he ended up failing, right? So here we have two coaches, both in experience. One was expected to fail. He ended up succeeding. The other one was expected to succeed. He ended up failing. And then we have the Zerbi, who has more experience than both of them combined because the Zerbi has coached three first division teams in the most competitive league in the world, the Premier. So I'm not saying that the Zerbi is the answer. I'm not saying that he will become a great coach. All I'm saying is there's no way for us to know. All we could do is speculate based on what the coaches have achieved. And the Zerbi has done a wonderful job with Brighton. He has done a wonderful job grooming young talent. The negative, he's never managed a big team. Flick, he has managed a big team. He won a sixtuple. The negative, his resume is too short, right? So we have two solid options. Both coaches have positive. Both coaches have negatives. It's natural to pick one over the other. But to pretend that somehow your opinion is a God-given fact, like God opened the sky and said, Flick is the chosen one. The Zerbi will be the next Kika Setien. Mm, you're just wrong about it because there's no way knowing for sure. Even the professionals get it wrong. You know, the scouts, the sporting directors, the presidents, the board members, people who work in football, who's dedicated their entire life to football, even they get it wrong. Why do you think somehow your opinion is God-given fact and that you know more than everybody? You don't. Again, we can favor one over the other, but there's no way to knowing for sure who's going to be the better option. Anyways, let's start talking about Alfonso Davis because it's reported that Deco met with Alfonso Davis's agents in the city of Barcelona. And I've seen that Davis's agents were in Barcelona for three days. They were there on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of last week. And they met with Deco on Thursday in the afternoon. They had a personal meeting. I think they went out for lunch or something. And they discussed the possibility of Barcelona signing Davis. Now, Davis looks like he is ready to leave Bayern. He's done with that mess. His contract does expire in 2025, and he's not looking to renew. What does that mean? That means that Bayern will have to get rid of him this summer. Because if they don't sell him this summer, next summer he will leave as a free agent. So this is their only chance to make money off him. And since he doesn't want to renew, then there's a almost a 99% chance that Davis will be offloaded in the summer transfer market. Of course, there's a lot of talks of him joining Real Madrid, but it seems that prior to meeting with Madrid, he met with Deco in the city of Barcelona, and it seems that his agents demanded that his salary be 12 million euro net. So that means 24 million euro gross for Barcelona. And that was it. What do we get out of this meeting? I don't think much, because Barcelona's official stance is that 
They cannot neither confirm nor deny this meeting. So that means the meeting did happen. If they can neither confirm nor deny it, it means it happened. But they're saying, Barcelona are saying that they're not looking to make a big investment into the left back position because they believe that their the chosen starter is Alejandro Valle. And they're not looking to make a huge investment. They are looking to bring someone to compete with him, most likely going to be Alex Valle back from loan, but they're not looking to make a huge investment. So what does that tell me? That tells me that most likely Deco sat down with Alfonso Davis's agents just to hear what they had to say. It's like, okay, all right, cool. Thanks for letting me know. And most likely Alfonso Davis's agents sat down with Deco just so they can drive his price up. Because, you know, you meet with Barcelona on your way to Madrid. You get caught by accident by some reporters. You give a vague statement to the press. And all of a sudden, everybody's talking about Barcelona trying to hijack Alfonso Davis away from Real Madrid. And then you hope that Real Madrid puts more money on the table to convince them. So I don't take anything out of this. The meeting did happen. It's not a rumor. But it's most likely it was just a courtesy meeting just to see what's out there. And again, Davis's agents most likely sat down just to inflate the price of the player. I don't think it's going to work with Real Madrid. Uh, Florentino Perez is not a dumb president. He knows what's out there. He's not going to – I don't think he would fall for such a dumb tactic. But anyways – um, I don't think Davis is coming to Barcelona, but that's just my take. Anyways, let's talk. Let's head to the chat. Say, oh, real quick. Speaking of signing players, I don't know how many times I have to say this because I keep saying it and people keep um, writing it on the comment section. So I'll say it again. There is no such thing as signing players in secret. No such thing. The moment you approach an agent to sign his player, that agent is going to run to the closest media outlet and let the whole world know that you're trying to sign his player. Why? Because agents want as many clubs involved as possible. Because the more clubs are involved, the higher the price goes up, the higher the price, the more money the agent and the player makes. The same goes for clubs. The moment you approach a club to sign their player, they're going to run to the closest media outlet and tell the whole world that you're trying to sign their player for the same exact reasons. So there's no such thing as signing players in secret. If you wanted to sell your house tomorrow, you're going to do an open house so everybody can see it. You're going to put ads out. You're not going to go to someone and be like, hey, I'm selling my house. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Come on. <laughs> like When car dealerships want to sell a car, they put out ads in TV and magazines and newspapers on the radio. They don't go, hey, we're selling a car. Don't tell anyone. Like In what world does a seller of a product doesn't want the whole world to know about he's selling that product? He's just like, Basic business 101, guys. So please stop writing in the comment section. We need to do our stealings in secret. There's no such thing. It's a selling market. People want to advertise their products. Players are their products. <sighs> Anyways, okay, let's do the chat section. And then um, Francis says, Mo, now you see our major problem is the DNA stuff. It's not. Uh, let's see. Victor says, we'll be nice with Flick. Our team need a big physic boost. We'll be perfect if we get some big physic changes on our youngsters. Yes, Flick will definitely put these players in shape and then we'll have them playing with lots of intensity. Um, and that's why Barcelona have been insisting on a coach from the German school of thought because they understand that they need to, you know, modernize the club, adapt it to modern, to modern football. And one thing you need to adapt to modern football is gun that, you know, make your players a lot more intense in their play style. Not physical necessarily, and they're going to be big and muscular, but more like about intensity because big and muscular is not the answer either. This is not American football. This is just regular football. And Richard says, honestly, when we assess big teams in Europe, many aren't doing all that well. Also Bayern City, even Madrid, at least. This past weekend, I should say. Um, I mean, Bayern are struggling. Madrid, Madrid have not been playing that great. They keep winning, though. They know how to win. But I wouldn't say most major clubs. I mean, City still City. Arsenal, you know, Liverpool, they're all doing well. Um, Tottenham have a promising project. I don't know where I'll get to. But I wouldn't say they're all struggling. Um, let's see. Richard says, you don't know, faltering shouts help. If we can be somewhat consistent, we should definitely get the second spot. 
This is the problem with Girona dropping points today. I was not happy about it at all. A lot of my friends were like, yay. And I'm like, no, we don't need Girona to drop points. We need Atletico de Madrid and Athletic Club de Bilbao to drop points. That's who we need to drop points because remember, we have to face all these four teams in the next few weeks. We have to face Athletic Club Bilbao in San Mames. Incredibly difficult match. They have gone, I think, seven or ten victories in a row at home. We have to face Atletico de Madrid at the, at the Wanda Metropolitana. I think they're undefeated this season at home. We have to face Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. They've already humiliated us twice this season, so there's no reason to think they're not going to do it again at their home stadium. And then we have to face Girona and Montilivi. Girona already scored four goals against us at home, so you can only imagine what they're going to do to us in Montilivi. So we can easily lose those four matches. And if we lose those four matches, you can kiss the Champions League spots goodbye. So we don't need Girona to lose points. We need Atletico Club de Bilbao and Atletico de Madrid to lose points so we can secure that third spot. So when I saw the Atletico Club, I actually watched half of the match. When I watched Atletico Club de Bilbao one, I said, crap. Ugh, I really needed Girona to win or both of them to draw. So that was not happy news for me. Um, but anyways... Let's do the last bit of news, and then we will talk about nothing because it's the last bit of news. All right, let's talk about Joshua Kimmich because he is now one step closer to Barcelona. Why? Well, it seems that Joshua Kimmich's relationship with Thomas Tuchel has completely broken down. He is completely upset at what's going on in Bayern Munich. He was subbed out in the last match they just lost. Apparently, he became so hysterical, he almost got into a fist fight with the assistant coach. I don't know if that's true or not, but what we do know for sure is that Joshua Kimmich's relationship with Thomas Tuchel has completely broken down, and Bayern Munich are now saying, I don't know if they're just saying that just to keep safe face, but supposedly Bayern Munich are now saying that they're not looking to sack Tuchel and they're looking to stay with him. I don't know if because Flick said no. I don't know if they're just saying that, but Apparently, the fact that Bayern Munich are not doing well, the fact that they're saying that they want to keep Tuchel, and the fact that Kimmich's relationship with Tuchel has completely broken down, the player is now seriously, seriously, seriously considering leaving more serious than ever. So that puts them that much closer to Barcelona. Of course, Barcelona have always been interested in Kimmich. They've always tracked the situation, but it was always nearly impossible or practically. 100% almost impossible because Kimmich has always been a cornerstone of Bayern Munich's project. There was no chance they were going to let him go. He was also seemed very happy there. But now that he wants to go, maybe there's a chance for Barcelona to sign him. Now, Kimmich's contract does expire in 2025. If he's unhappy, he's not going to look to renew. And if he doesn't renew, what does that mean? Same thing as Alfonso Davis. That means that this summer will be Bayern Munich's last chance to make money off his sale because otherwise he will leave as a free agent. So if Kimmich is not happy and he wants to leave, then Bayern Munich will most likely put him on the market this summer. And they're saying that maybe he could cost upwards of 50 million euros, which is not too crazy, and Barcelona could afford that. Now, Barcelona had already budgeted around 40 million for the pivot position. 50 million, it doesn't put us, put us that off. Maybe Barcelona can scrap 10 million here and there and could end up signing him. Uh, I'm a little bit... On the fence about the signing of Kimmich, I, I love him as a player. I think he would be a great addition to the team. I think he would completely raise the level of the squad. My only concern is his age because in three, four years, we're going to be back in the same spot looking for another pivot. I would rather someone in, who's 25, that's a player in his prime, I can give you another nine years versus someone who's approaching 30 and might only give you three good years, maybe four. I don't know, but still, if he comes, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, why are we breaking it? Of course, he would be a great, great signing. But the only thing that worries me is his age. But anyways, that is all the news. Let's do several comments, and then we'll end the live stream. Remember, there's another video that I posted earlier today. Make sure to check it out. There's news about Tebas, the Club World Cup, and Barcelona's third kit. I really like it. I don't know if you do, but check out the video. Just look at it. And... Let me know. Uh, mm. Richard says, why do you continue to be stupid in letting players and their agents use uh, to leverage more money? That's all his. I mean, look, if 
Um, if Davis wants to use us to bleed out Madrid more money, go for it. <laughs> Shit. I mean, I would meet him with them every day. Just keep raising his price. <laughs> right? Uh, Ra says, Frank Reichardt's story false. There was an article on the Fox Sports saying Laporta asked Yeah, that was completely false. I mean, Reichardt hasn't coached since I think it's 10 years that he's been out of the game, 12 years, something like that. And, you know, he is a million years old. We don't need a coach who is a million years old. I think he's 67 or something. Uh, he's pretty old. I mean, in football terms, not in real life terms. Um, anyways. Uh, let's see. Sean says, hey, can you do a video on the players of Arsenal currently have a loan and how they are performing? Um, I've spoken a lot about the low knees. Araujo, Julian Araujo is doing really well. Barcelona are thinking of bringing him back. So is Alex Baye also bringing him back for the left-back position. Uh, of course, both will get their shot in the preseason. Uh, Lenglet is going to be sold. Dest is going to be sold. Um, Shadri Yad most likely going to be bought by Real Betis, and then Barcelona going to buy him back. Uh, Eric Garcia is doing really well with Girona. Looks like Girona want to keep him. Most likely he will be sold to Girona. And then Pablo Torre started out bad. He's doing better now in the second half of the season. Barcelona are considering extending his loan, but they don't want to part ways with him yet. Barcelona think that he could still be a good asset. All right. King Hunt says, hey, Mo, just go home. As usual, I can't miss the – oh, just got home. Uh, I can't miss the stream. I'm actually optimistic for the game on Wednesday. But as you said, it's not too high. I hope we do well next season. I hope Flick becomes coach. Yes, my friend, I hope we do well as well. Because if you watch the video from earlier today, I talk about the FIFA rankings. And we need to do well in the quarterfinals. I'm sorry, in the round of 16 for the FIFA rankings. Let's see. Um Igor says, Kimmich is 28, mindful of his class. He will stay relevant within the next four years. True, true. I mean, but if he was like, you know, 25, give us an extra three years. You know, I hate having to always be in the same spot every two, three years. Like, oh, no, we need someone new. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. His signing would be amazing. I'm not saying don't sign him. Like, absolutely not. Uh, okay. NJ Flip, whose name is not New Jersey. You already explained that to me. If people saw the video clip from Amazon where Flick was so pissed off at the national team players during halftime because they're losing, we need that mentality. Yeah, we do. We do. We really do. This whole going on the press conference like Xavi does, it'd be like, well, we played well, but, you know, the wind was really strong. Uh, big data says we should be first. Uh, the grass was too green. I mean, that's just not a winning mentality. Uh, winning mentality is okay. We suck, and I'm gonna make sure we don't suck again and go back. He only did that once. I think it was after Almeria, where Xavi reportedly went into the locker room, just completely lost his crap. Like he was throwing things, he was yelling at players, he yelled at Lewandowski. He was like, When are you gonna start running? He only did that once, and I was really happy when he did that. I was like, Finally, this is what we need. We need Xavi to lay into the players and tell them to stop being, you know, lazy and do something. But he only did it once. And then every other game, well, we played really well. Like this last game, he was like, we played really well. We defended really well. And then Pedri goes on a mic and says, we had a horrible match. We need to improve. So how is your player understanding that you're doing bad and you as the coach are not? And people still defend them. They're like, oh, no, it's, you know, he didn't get his signings. He didn't get his signings. Barcelona have signed 22, 24 players since he arrived. Come on. Let's stop with the cheap excuses. Uh, let's see what else. Harris says we can sign Kimmich, but because when in his 30s, Salamasia Tans can take over. True. We could, we could, we could. All right, we'll do one more comment and then we will end it. Uh, let's see. Have I skipped anyone? Mm. Uh, Alfonso Ag Mark says Alfonso agents are using Barcelona to get a better deal from Real Madrid. Yeah, that's most likely what it is. That's what I said. Uh, you know, uh, uh, also Barcelona are not looking to make a big investment, so it's not like we're getting our hopes up and kind of like with Bergvall, and then he ends up you know pulling that on us. So um, we're very well aware that Davis is not in our plans. Paldes. Uh, but anyways, all right. I think that is it, guys. Um, Actually, Nia Bali says, I'm so excited for the Champions League match against the Italians. What is your take on? Um, I think we have a shot at winning just because of what they're going through. But 
I'm not too excited about the match. I'm actually very scared. Uh, I used to always look forward, be like, yeah, Champions League week, let's go. And now it's like, oh, crap. Champions League week is here. <laughs> but I, I feel like that's every match. Every match is like, oh, my God, what's going to happen tonight? Um, I always, like, text my friends. I'm like, are you guys ready to get your heart broken? Because I feel like that's what happens every time. But anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Really good turnout. I think we had 280 people watching at the height of it, uh, which is pretty amazing. So thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, make sure to check out the video from earlier today. Lots of interesting news there. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night or good morning, wherever you are in the world. And as always, be scarce.